the thing that I think the script caught that was interesting and and different was Cinderella's spirit, but in a in a contemporary way that made her goodness very strong and warm and witty and anything that you might have worried about being sort of precious or too period or too classical or too removed or too traditional um, that seemed to be dealt with in a very light way so the the film script had delicacy and um, and it seemed as though they were interested in trying to find that tone throughout the whole of its um, execution so entertaining yes but um, light and simple and uh, it's always very difficult to do things that are simple um, because you want them to be kind of at the same one at the same time you want them to be rich so uh, the sleight of hand that is Cinderella uh, a simple story that that carries much much more power than it might appear to was what attracted me uh, to the the project and and a great script And I was pleased to say that I liked very much where both Dante and Sandy were in these very fundamental, style-defining ways. Um, Humour was going to be a big part of my approach. But, um, you know, seriousness of purpose when it comes to the emotional life of uh, Cinderella, and particularly the idea of making her someone who was at peace with who she was, uh, had a sense of who she was, was happy with who she was. And as contrary as it might seem, uh, trying to find a way to uh, present a character who wasn't going to go through the entire film simply waiting for a man, chasing a man or chasing riches or chasing something that's not here now. So we needed a performance and a, and a character that was very present, really is an example, which Cinderella is, of how you might live your life to the happiest extent it can be. And I wanted to do that. The Cinderella is not a pushover. She's someone who sticks up for herself, but she does so with compassion and intelligence. Um, all of that adds up to something very charismatic because this is someone who knows who they are and expresses who they are. And we need an actress very free and very in touch with youthfulness and playfulness in her own personality, which Lily is. Um, and in a way can embody lots of what is beautiful and fun and gorgeous and delicious about being a girl, sometimes a little girl, and what is beautiful and marvellous and gorgeous about being a woman. And uh, she moves from one to the other and back and forth, as I think uh, probably all girls and women do and all men and boys do, because we can stay very youthful and playful until we're vast ages and we can seem quite mature sometimes in difficult circumstances when we're visually and superficially quite young. So a sense of play in all that, and a sense of honesty, a real honesty, something with which the audience could connect so that we could uh, both love her uh, and feel as though in some sense she represents us in the story. Similarly, the warmth that Cinderella's house had to have, the warmth, the invitation to be, for the audience, a real symbol, a working symbol of what a happy family might be lucky enough to have and how a, a house becomes a home when tended with the loving care that he gives it visually. Um, and then where we could be graphic, like in the attic, to have a sense of the, the drama uh, that, that puts a single figure in a big empty space where the visual is provided by the physical geometrical drama of big sloping roofs and large empty floors. A, a strong contrast in its simplicity to the, um, uh, the dazzle and the intensity of flavor that you get in the ballroom. So Dante had that natural instinct for how to orchestrate and was very responsive and attentive to the kind of inflection of all of that that I wanted to give it, whether it was a round staircase in the family home rather than an Edwardian square one, um, uh, degree of decoration, degree of filigree, degree of uh, complexity when it came to the fancy stuff. and and. Uh, it was a very, very good collaboration because I admire him enormously. I uh, always have done, admire his work. So I know I want him to do, I want to get his very best instincts and then 
my job is to guide a little bit to make that fit into the cohesive whole that also bears in mind cinematography and costumes and hair and makeup and lighting and music and performance. And he was very open to letting me do that. Sandy Powell, uh, as brilliant as she is and as detailed and prepared as she is, is also open to both what people like me might have to say and the actors, and for instance, with the fairy godmother's costume, one thing that Helena Bonham Carter definitely wanted was wings. And uh, there was a question of, really, do we need wings? Is that, and and, and uh, Sandy had questions at first, and then the wings came in, and they were a really good complement to this very interesting idea that she had, Sandy, of the, the um, dress lighting up from within, and that there were diamonds and lights inside it that could make it, just on a practical level, mechanically on set, light up, not just with uh, post effects, um, but with a real sort of battery-fed um, kit uh, that the good people at Philips uh, helped us with. And in the end, it's a combination of their work and what we do in post-production that makes the fairy godmother glow at all times and be as regal and as funny and as otherworldly and as from yet another period. We go a little bit further back in terms of the inspiration for the costume and it has uh, a, a, a little further back into the, into the, as it were, the world of the uh, 18th century. And um, I think it's, it's uh, a, a wonderfully separate, witty, eccentric, but still very beautiful, still very attractive, still very motherly and uh, heavenly kind of uh, concoction and every kind of technology went into it incredible detail in the sewing and then, then the seamstressness of it all um, the light the corseting the size of the dress and then um, as Helena wanted the wings